Welcome. This is the November 29th Open ZFS Production Users Call with Jan B, Steve N, Alexander M, Steve R, and myself, Michael. Perhaps others will join. But the hot topic of the hour is the issue that's been revealed via block cloning. And if you want to take a peek at that PR, there is this one, uh, 15526, I believe is the key one. And Alexander, please educate us on this topic. Yeah, uh, it was kind of perfect storm with multiple things changing same time, multiple issues found same time, and it took some. It, it took us quite unprepared and unexpected of what exactly are we fixing, but thanks to some people from community who was able to reproduce it more and more. It seems like it's getting into some shape now. So uh, after all investigation, it appeared that there is a problem in ZFS existing science forever. Uh, when uh, there is a race condition during file write, there is a window when LSEQ, uh, seek hole or seek data, syscall may return that file is one big hole or at least it has some hole, holes inside it. And for many years, nobody really cared or not cared enough to, to for it to be important until uh, CSUTILs in uh, version 9 plus in recent Linuxes started to use uh, LSEQ for file copying for simple CP command. And same appliance for use of copy file range in CP in FreeBSD 14 and later 15. You said 13? Uh, yeah. Okay, thank uh, you. Well, 14 zero, obviously from zero in 13, I don't remember in what exactly version. Uh, yeah, copy file range uh, originally tries to use block cloning, but if block cloning returns error not supported, it falls back to software implementation, which does use uh, LSEQ or whole searching on FreeBSD. I haven't seen code on Linux, but it may be also. But at very least, uh, binutils of in Linux use it directly. Yeah, as far as I heard, again, I haven't looked on all sources, just too many sources around, too many issues to look at. So, and it's what's happened is that uh, if ZFS falsely reports uh some holes then then copy doesn't co doesn't copy anything and uh, yeah as was commented uh just right now in the chat on freebsd it's not only a cp command but it also cat install and maybe something else a few commands are uh, using it so potentially it may affect others too but idea is the same. Everything that copies file may, if it, it's, it's getting a report about hole, it won't copy that range, which means on destination it will be zeros instead of some user data, which is pitiful for user, but that's where it is. Uh, there was found experimentally that uh, disabling sync during LSEQ reduces probability of of the corruption, but it, it probably doesn't fix it completely. So it's only quick workaround, partial workaround, but seems to be working. But it's, it's more of a question of timing rather than a real fix. So meanwhile, uh, seems like what a better fix or proper fix is right now merged into OpenZFS master. Uh, there is ongoing ZFS 2.2.2 release PR is now been cooked with that patch and bunch of others. And hopefully in next few days, we'll have 2.2.2 ZFS release that should have everything fixed. That's what's related to this specific seek bug. The ongoing uh, FreeBSD errata for the two uh, patch, patches for built-in ZFS. And everybody is prepared, everybody is aware. There are a lot of noise <laughs> in community, a lot of angry people, but what can we say? It's bug even precedes OpenZFS. It's literally goes back almost decade, probably. 
That's so, interesting. And just to I be guess clear, you go ahead, Jan. So the problem is that it actually uh, it wrongfully reports holes in the file, and then this problem became re relevant in the real world because recent changes made other software implicitly depend on this because of copy file range finally being used. So that now basically the software gets told that there's a hole in the file, it seeks over it to reproduce a hole and then it has implicitly doing, for example, install, uh, install lots of zeros instead of a valid file. And block cloning just makes this a whole mo mo lot more likely to encounter because the deduplicated files are somehow tracked as what are the block ranges which can each basically trigger this when they're in flight or what is or is block cloning just completely unrelated and it just was encountered by accident at the same time. Mm, there is no proof that it's related. Maybe it affects some timings, but it's more like coincidence. It's just on Linux where originally it was reported, same uh, yeah. binutils or whatever, sysutils package. It just started using both uh, cloning and LSEQ in more or less same updates and uh, immediately hit the problem. So... Okay. Uh, I'm like, not saying the new feature. Yeah, it's just everybody started using at the same time, uh, partially because again, the FS got block cloning, lets everybody start using fancy things, and those fancy things unfortunately fought back. Uh, on other sides, as I've told, that's one of our issues. Meanwhile, while people were trying to debug that specific issue, there was reported several issues in block cloning. And uh, I found a couple bugs in there too, in particular in zeal replay of block cloning. And uh, that's it. If people first got some other corruptions, panic, reboot, and at the reboot, they tried to replace zeal and got another panic. Oh, so okay. the. So it was interesting couple of weeks <laughs> lately. So right now we have a couple more patches, uh, actually more. We have, I think we have three now patches for block cloning also in master and that also going to be merged in 2.2.2. So uh, right now block cloning will be still disabled there for a while just for safety because just people are not sure that we caught everything that could be potentially be wrong with block cloning, but uh, at least uh, specific issue of LC should be fixed and block cloning as, should be as good as we know it can be now. So as good as it was supposed to be. And... That's true of all software. <laughs> uh, Jan has a question. Do you think LibArchive would be impacted based on what you know? And are there other utilities? I mean, it can only happen when LibArchive has uh, uncompressed content to process. Because otherwise you can't just DD uh, or whatever, copy file range, uh, a bunch of uh, compressed file content. Uh, but yeah. Interesting to know if, for example, an uncompressed tarball could uh, also be affected. Okay. Uh, I wonder. Go ahead. Does uh, does LibArchive use LSIC directly, not uh, related to block cloning? Just okay. If it's huge hole in the file, let's instead yeah. of compressing it, just. Oh, good question. Uh, that if it wants to preserve uh, holes, it has to, right? Otherwise, it would uh, basically depend on, in the case of CFS, the zero length encoding or compression. But it would basically uh, materialize the holes. So yeah, probably there is some code there. 
to watch out for and looking for explicit seek calls. And even if there isn't, it would be a prime candidate for optimizing for block cloning to uh, definitely uncompressed tarballs of, for example, jails around and then quickly create the files, but uh, use block cloning to create them and still have the jail around as a tarball. Uh, well, the problem sure. maybe that you have to pad the file content basically to be aligned to blocks, So that, which I think the normal record size of a tar archive doesn't do, which would prevent uh, this kind of optimization from doing block copy because the blocks wouldn't be aligned correctly. So you oh, yeah, need I, really, I really don't. Format to make that work. Go ahead. I really, I really doubt uh, the file could have the same alignment or unpack it same as inside tar, even if it's not compressed. But I wonder whether instead of compression, a lib archive could just look okay if this one huge file don't waste time trying to compress it, but just write it zeros, whatever. But maybe May it doesn't. support attempting to preserve uh, holds and files. Uh, so that would require seeking to the next data or whole uh, range and then reproducing the seek command to uh, unarchive it, which mm, the reason why I wouldn't see that running into the same issue is that you're normally not maybe writing the, you have the indirection of going through the archive file. So you're normally not directly taking the same tar and piping it into another one that happens. And it's the one way to recursively copy across file systems uh, with lots of metadata preserved. So it could happen there maybe. But other than that, yeah. And there's been a lot of discussion about how uh, or what could follow up on block cloning uh, on Mastodon and what used to be Twitter. Um, with ideas of uh, shouldn't this be done, could this be done as part of send and receive so that the receive would be data set would be pre uh, block dereference by default and so on, or should there be an offline pass, there's a system call which says, take the, compare these two file ranges and replace all identical blocks, something like this. So that you basically, if user space ha has an idea which files uh, file ranges should be uh, deduplicatable, it can just tell ZFS to please atomically basically replace a block if it's identical with uh, a reference to a block from some other file for a range, so that you could basically do an offline dedupe uh, from user space without running trace condition. Yeah, the, the, not, the legacy old style dedupe has lots of uh, things to watch out for and only helps in a few very specific cases for which it was designed and is not the end or be all of still, uh, saving storage. But basically a way for user space to tell ZFS to please look at these two ranges and these two file descriptors. And if they really are identical, uh, replace blocks in one with references to the blocks from the other, that would be a quite useful feature to basically punch dedupe into existing files. No, oh, yeah, that it was brought up several times. <clears throat> I saw uh, in different uh, OpenZFS tickets. Mm -hmm. So people people do interested with that. It's just yeah, more a question that... of what this call think. shall it be, how it should be wired and where. Yeah, it has to be some kind of compare and swap like primitive. Oh, yeah, uh, because uh, just doing it without comparing uh, would be inherently racy and you can't really do that unless you have a file write locking protocol in place, which you normally do own. So you're 
to make it really useful as a building block and not uh, just as something a specific application can use for its own files, it would uh, have to include a verify step and then an atomic verifier and replace and not uh, uh, replace this file range with the blocks from this file range and the other one without verification because then at least the without verification should be explicitly opt in as a special case for even further optimization. <clears throat> and for example, uh, if you have virtual machines with uh, just raw disk images in files, this would be very useful. Or uh, for the, as we, for getting the, as close as possible to uh, rebasable clones. Because while you would have to reproduce the uh, files, you could then at least deduplicate the file content in a way which detaches the block references from the uh, block, uh, what is it called? Block index or something, uh, the indirection between file block files and uh, blocks in ZFS per uh, data set. And if you have okay. this dependency broken by uh, another level of indirection, you could basically have the DDoP code handle it for at least reasonable numbers of files, like if operating system installation, you could just clone them. Then okay. They could be virtual. Yeah. If you had this offline DDoP, after a big system upgrade, you could basically upgrade and then DDoP to get the you storage do. back. Yep. You're in the future. Let's let's focus yeah, on this one for just a sec. But yeah, it so does open up the It's doors. worth keeping working on it instead of just saying, we've been burned once, let's leave the feature chicken bit on forever. No question. And remember, dedupe rhymes with poop. Um, question for you, Alexander. <laughs> Has a test been written to catch this in the future? And you think there is a test that was close to catching it, but, or just someone didn't think about the, uh, the scenario at all? I think Tony Hatter just opened PR half an hour ago, but I haven't looked yet what exactly he's testing there. Okay, cool. Uh, other questions for Alexander? Oh, Jesse, Steve, Stu. Did any of you turn on the feature and potentially have issues? And apparently I see in the ticket, there's mention of like zpool status, but it's not reporting corruption. Uh, is that accurate, Alexander? And would it show up after a scrub, or would it? Would you never know until it's too late on suffering? You're talking about uh, you're talking about LSIG bug. Yes. Uh, you you never know. It's not a corruption from a point of ZFS. It's just a chain of zeros because a written to destination are done by by application or not done in this case. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It sounds like it's a really insidious bug because it it does not corrupt the on this data per se. Instead, it tells clever but not clever enough user space uh, applications that yeah, that's safe to do, and then user space instructs the internal to destroy the copy at least. Jan, what was the system call that was ignored? We mentioned on the last call. Was it the LC you know or something? Uh, you mentioned that I think the in the situation with the yeah, Go the, packages, a system call was ignored for success or failure. Yeah, we, but it looks like it was even more complex, as Alexander ah. just explained, that oh, yeah. they did not completely ignore this uh, seek uh, next hole or seek next data, uh, but that the kernel misreported it to them, and then they did the wrong thing with the information because the kernel gave them the wrong metadata about the file. Okay, got it. And these are the two, uh, yeah, bug reports are on. I think one of the two should be the one. Oh, okay. I oh, know that one is uh, the second one. 
I'm just it's wrong. That's so really the first about... one's a free BSD ticket, perhaps. Yeah, that's uh, okay. the engineering tracking issue for potential ZFS data corruption reported by Atmast uh, a few hours ago. Right, and uh, Jesse, you have a question. Do you, shall I read that, or do you want to just vocalize it? Uh, uh, I just threw it in there so I wouldn't forget, but uh, yeah. yeah. sure, please go ahead. But if you're using NFS v3 or another protocol that does not support LSEQ, is it safe to assume that there's no risk of corruption? Both NFS and Samba theoretically support server-side copy, which map into copy file range. Uh, and copy file range may potentially use LSEQ on a, depending on implementation. But according to our teammates who tried to bang in heavily on Samba, uh, on, like, they were unable to reproduce the bug. We are not sure exactly why, but so far, at least on TrueNAS, it wasn't reproducible. Don't know why. Um, just a question: Is uh, block level deduplication for Zvolts planned, or is that something which is going to stay limited to file systems? No, like uh, there are some hooks uh, in Z Z in Zil replay, for example, uh, to handle that. But the question is mostly, primarily, in lack of uh, API to do that. To, to the wall or yeah practically to the wall uh, so would the BPI uh, use copy file range between two device file descriptors on the uh, block device right or character device in FreeBSD mm, no it would need to need a look uh, on, a, on on DFS implementation DFS has limited set of features that is a limited set of uh, controls that can pass to, un to to individual devices so but yeah isn't it's there something to do the back uh, basically um point to point copies between blocks already for scuzzy uh block copy and uh, commands and stuff like this SCSI support has SCSI has uh, copy primitives, actually even two. One is extended copy, and uh, one is Microsoft in, introduced uh, create uh, ticket right from uh, create token right from token. Uh, so those are supported, for example, by CTL, but they are not exposed to our GOM or uh, oh. CDF interfaces. We and don't have client side for that. Un e unsop uh, error if you apply copy file range to a um, device file descriptor because mm. the system call cannot be implemented on a de device file descriptor right now. Yeah, that's what I would guess. I don't think it would pass through DevFS to anywhere down. As I've told, DevFS is pretty limited in what it calls to un from underlying yes. devices. Practically read write. IOCTL flash done. Yeah, okay. Okay, anything else related to block cloning surprises? Okay, any user questions, Jesse and Steve and Stu and Jan? Any discoveries of the week? It always happens in production. Uh, let's see, Alexander, any new developments in a positive note to report? <laughs> <laughs> Something Last exciting. couple of weeks, I'm all jumping around this area about block cloning and things. Yeah. Can't, can't recall what I was working before, but... I hear you. Ah, uh, trying to think what else. Uh, Jan, has your vision for like read only clones changed any since we last visited it? No, um, I don't know um, no if anyone there. here other than you has already uh, seen this 
I think most um, have. If I do, if I do a search on MFS, I'll probably yep. find it. Boom. So let's see yep. who was on the call. I'm sure it was a pretty good turnout. It was uh, Stu and Jesse. Stuart so is. yes, they've heard about this. So yep. uh, let so, us know when you have updates on that. Um, the only Black thing I can report is that it worked as expected for the upgrade from the release candidates ah. to a 14 release for my test jail. Okay. And yeah, that's about it. Um, so what I do is I take a FreeBSD based system, install it into a CFS data set, snapshot it, clone the snapshot, and keep the snapshot read only so that it can't uh, build up any changes which would have to be rebased, which is by design impossible and not going to change, uh, short of block pointer rewriting. So instead, I have to avoid building up changes. The way I do that is that I only allow the file system to be mounted for a fraction of a second to create uh, empty directories for missing mount points, and then mount it read only again so that I treat it as stateless, the base system, the packages, and so on. And that way I can build up without relying on null FS or even worse union FS, um, the file system tree. And to make it updatable for a FreeBSD jail, I have a unmountable data set for the jail, which only serves as a container for child ZFS data sets. Then I have an, one other layer of indirection, one for base, one for packages, and one for the mutable state, which are also just containers and are also um, set to be um, unmountable. And the other file systems in the jail are then set to not auto mount, but be mountable. Because I also clean up every mount point underneath the jail root. And because I set the mount point on the unmountable data sets to be the jail root directory path, uh, everything inherits the right um, mount point. So that ZFS auto mounting logic then can take care of mounting things in the right order according to uh, just the lexical sort of the mount points once it becomes time to start the jail. Okay. <clears throat> the nice thing is that now uh, the immutable data sets and the mutable ones are no longer trapped in a parent child relationship, but instead are just uh, well, siblings or cousins in the tree structure. Okay. So that I can write the, for example, the package uh, subtree, uh, assuming that everything is unmounted so that there are no uh, mount point conflicts, and then recreate it by cloning again without having to save uh, the descendant child data sets which contain the mutable state. Right. So the advantage over the usual OCI container image workflow where you basically untar and then apply writeouts once per uh, layer is that the layers um, are independent of each other. So if there is a FreeBSD uh, errata, for example, for OpenZFS, um, I wouldn't have to reapply all of the packages. Instead, I can just mount them and it works out. And to avoid having to migrate the configuration files, the slash etc and user local etc are a, a tempfs file systems mounted through the mount uh, mfs command, which uh, populates the tempfs with a skeleton directory containing the now used base system or package collections. Um, slash etc content, and then makes the tempfs read only, requiring it to be in memory as is part of a course with tempfs isn't a problem because uh, slash etc, both base and ports is normally less than three megabytes, and it's still swappable if you have swap. So if that's a problem for you, uh, ZFS uh, <coughs> will not even get to that point. Yep. Yeah. I would love to see a gradual animation of you building this up and tearing it down because you've got so many clever little things happening. So just saying. 
Uh, do you think you'll scri- you've scripted this? I trust, and is that something yes, we can have, use on the uh, outside? I've seen yes. your gists before. You can. It's a. It's just a bit of shell scripting right now. Okay. Well, it's fast. It provisions a jail in less than half a second. Love it. And has that been shared in the gists before, or? Is it still just uh, on your local hard drive? And it's back up, luckily, but yes. Um, Good. <laughs> because it's still a bit, yeah. While not everyone here is a jail user, any questions for Jan about his clever, immutable... The same and... trick should also work for uh, Linux containers, so it's not FreeBSD specific. Excellent. Uh, what is there have some, any, a link you can share review, at this time? Questions? Uh, am I completely insane doing that? Are there downsides? <laughs> so, has have any links changed, or is it? Do I just look for just from the past, or have it, yeah, has it not been linked? The links haven't changed. Um... Looking at the Edmas review here. Okay. Um, anything else while we're together? I'm very glad we got to talk about the block cloning inspired yep. issues. Go ahead. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. So the LSEQ bug um, exists in all prior versions of OpenZFS, but there's only been recent changes. Uh, that sort of unearth it is that the situation it is easy for, for for many years but like it was several times like modified here and there and that uh, tunable that was mentioned as a workaround uh to do sync on dirty denotes uh was set three years ago so it depends what what do you consider exactly burst time it may vary between like three years or eight i don't remember how deep i i dug maximum uh but okay. uh, now uh, it fired when uh, linux got updated cp command i see i see so it's not that 2.2.0 changed anything in open zfs it was more related to what happened in linux side yeah so, uh, okay thank you but the annoying part is that we have to admit that Linux core utils wasn't wrong in doing that. They used the API as it was specified to be used, as far as I can tell. So it was supposed to work. And it just exposed a bug in ZFS. So in this case, really, you can't blame the core utils for expecting a copy file range to to work as documented. Right. I was just trying to figure out uh, if I had any production exposure. It's sounding mm-hmm. like only the risk would be if you had the block cloning it enabled on a recent build. No. Oh, no. A window exists without, it's just a lot more likely because it's a race condition exposed by that. Got it. Mm-hmm. Is, is so, there a specific, uh, can you repeat again, or wait, maybe it's in your notes. Uh, there was a oh, core utils, okay. Is there a specific version of core utils? I can look it up. People it may be complaints. able there may be a build flag in core utils to uh, make it not use that, or you could patch the configure script or whatever to uh, basically tell the, the build system that this system call is unavailable because you're on an ancient kernel version. And the, or your libc to not basically make the symbol available or something if you really want to mess with user land to hide the entry points into the buggy kernel code. Hmm. Alexander, you had something? Uh, no, I haven't seen the code uh, of 
core kills, but uh, what I heard from people that uh, that in 9.0 they introduced copy file range support and 9.2 maybe LSEQ, but I haven't seen it myself. I won't lie. Maybe wrong. Another oh, command to mate. watch out for, at least in FreeBSD, would be packs uh, in read-write mode, which is one way, for example, uh, commands like um, mount MFS, copy the hierarchical uh, tree structure, packs.rv-w, so that it's basically creating a U-star archive and immediately unpacking it again And CPIO, if someone did the same optimizations there. Anything else? I'm not sure who asked the question or Go for uh, it. if it was answered, but the, the, the fix that, at least the fix that I saw that Rob put in was that there were, de there were debuff checks that have been sporadically used over the last, I don't know, like decade or more. Uh, but usually it's only one or the other, not both. And that was that was like the crux of the fix was to let's do both checks, correct? Well, yeah, there is a uh, like one status for denote was it anything no, like denote require sync no, require commit. And there is separate uh, dirty records for individual buffers. Which actually sync it during the sync, not during the commit, written during the commit, and uh, appears that uh, you know dirty flag is cleared at first, and then uh, commit you know, sync process take TXG sync goes and writes individual log records. So there is a time frame when denote is already not on the dirty list and appears to be clean, while individual buffer are still being written. And they are they still still have dirty records and have data that should be visible as committed for the LC, but they are not. Uh, okay. And the and the previous question was about like our previous versions of ZFS affected, and it seems like with like the the DMU transaction sync or whatever, like the flag that people are saying to zero instead of one, like there's it seems like a lot of people running older releases are much less likely to encounter problems but the older versions are still susceptible to that bug, no matter how unlikely they are to actually encounter it. Oh, well, yeah. As I've told, clearing of that flag by many people reported uh, as helping, but uh, it cannot guarantee anything. It likely just changes some timings, changes probability. It, it cannot sure. fix. Be just simply because dirty is checked before that flag. If, like, if somebody is lucky and try to do LC in exactly perfect moment, then they will get false result either. Oh, crazy. Uh, I mean, it's just interesting. I don't think I've ever upgraded ZFS because of uh, a problem. I think I've always upgraded ZFS because I'm like, ooh, shiny new feature. Uh, I feel like this is like the first time everybody's gonna be running for <laughs> the new ZFS releases that are cut. No, dot zero releases are always scary. What can I say? <laughs> it's just uh, I hoped more that more people use uh, functionality while it's still in in master, like all the new introduc introduced features, like the block cloning itself. But with uh, uh, core utils not using AZL seek or copy file range for a long time, and then immediately a number of repos switching to using it. And in production, <laughs> it's kind of perfect storm. Well, I appreciate all of your work, and I'm really looking forward to the code that you put into two two. But uh, I think I'm going to wait till two 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 comes out. <laughs> well, yeah, hopefully it shouldn't take long. PR is already open, been reviewed. It just just last night I, I created one more uh, PR oh, for annoying. block cloning. What? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one annoying problem for those wanting to stick on the old supposedly rare-tastic code is that FreeBSD 12 still uh, has the original FreeBSD port of ZFS thread. 
So 12.4 is not based on OpenZFS, but the old port of ZFS, plus uh, the patches merge back and forth. So it could get basically stuck on the dead branch of the tree. Uh, backporting the changes would be problematic. Yeah, but uh, CP is there on 12, it's very trivial. It doesn't use copy file range, it'll seek nothing, just simply reads and writes and it doesn't care. Yeah. So, okay, so it just needs the seek bug fix, nothing more. No, yeah, it was like it would be good to merge it there, but uh, so, so far it's not even planned as part of errata notice unless somebody see it. It just, I, I worry that it may uh, require slightly modified patch at least i haven't changed how code haven't, haven't checked how code could change in in a year so at least um, mechanically move between the files or something don't remember we used to wrangle slower systems i used to compile my own uh, dot files so i would have had like a newer version of ls on a really old version of zfs and i know rob was asking if anybody actually if anybody had any old solaris disks to to try this out <laughs> <laughs> so there's oh. some crazy person out there who's going to trigger this. <laughs> yeah, I kind of shocked Matt when he was working on RAID Z uh, expansion that, yes, there is really a system out there with uh, FreeBSD boot blocks in the reserve blocks for that purpose. And uh, using this reserve block space for the boot blocks to do the initial pass of RAID Z expansion would wipe my, out my boot blocks in that system. I've since uh, told him that, yeah, I can't find the box since I moved with the system. But uh, it, there used to be a system where the normal bootloader didn't boot, but the raw boot blocks did boot like that. So, yeah. Strange things happen in production. You know, uh, the blocks are, there is a range in the ZFS on this format reserved, I think, like eight megabits, but it's close to the start of the pool uh, on disk per device, which are reserved for boot code so that you can have VFS on raw disks without a partition table, which was always dangerous, but yeah, because other operating systems may try to initialize an unformatted disk if there isn't a partition table they recognize. Mm -hmm. um, this is basically only happened because Solaris at the time had problems with uh, enabling caching on disks with a partition table because of how historically their UFS work. And so if, to get write caching on ZFS disks, you had to keep them un, uh, formatted with ZFS on the raw disk. And we're talking about early uh, ZFS stuff here. Mm. That's a long time ago, but yes. Yes, it is. Uh, but pools sometimes, and their, at least their layout, sometimes survives uh, several hardware generations, mm -hmm. lots of software generations, because data has, enough data has inertia. <laughs> Correct. Anything else, or shall we call it at about 44 after? Thanks, Alexander, for uh, giving a concise uh, summary. Yes, very much. Thank you, Alexander. That was timely and very important. Very, very helpful in our management panics as well. Okay, well, perhaps catch you in a week. <laughs>